Joshua chapter 7, verse number 1. But the children of Israel committed a trespass in the accursed thing. For Achan, the son of Carmi, the son of Zabdi, the son of Zerah, of the tribe of Judah, took of the accursed thing. The Bible says, And the anger of the Lord was kindled against the children of Israel. Israel hath sinned. Verse number 11. Israel hath sinned, and they have also transgressed my covenant, which I commanded them. For they have even taken of the accursed thing. Look, I want you to look at the, the King James Bible. Look at this. They, they have even taken of the accursed thing and have also stolen and dissembled also. And they have put it even among their own stuff. So he's saying they've taken it and they've put it among their own stuff. It doesn't belong there. It doesn't belong in the child of God's home. It doesn't belong with them. But they have taken that and they have put it among their own stuff. So you can see that he's talking about the children of God here. And the application is for you and I today the same. That you have taken something, if you and I have taken something, and it's something foreign, it's something that's cursed, and we've brought it into our home, and we've put it among our own stuff. Think about it. Therefore the children of Israel could not stand before their enemies. Wow. But turn their backs before their enemies because they were accursed. And what, did, what did he say to them? What did God say to him? Neither will I be with you anymore except ye destroy the accursed from among you. What does that mean? That means God's power is not going to be with you. They were still children of God. But he said, I'm not going to fellowship with devils. I would not that you have fellowship with devils. He said, the things the, sac the Gentiles sacrifice, they sacrifice unto devils. These idols, he said, they're things of devils. And he said, I, I will not, neither will I any more be with you, except you destroy the accursed from among you. You've got to get rid of it. You've got to get it out of your house, get it away from you. You can't have it. And then he says, up sanctify the people and say, sanctify yourselves against tomorrow. For thus saith the Lord God of Israel, there is an accursed thing in the midst of thee, O Israel. Thou canst not stand before thine enemies until ye take away the accursed thing from among you. What a principle. You know why people can't reprove the unfruitful works of darkness? Because they're still fellowshipping with it. You know why they get mad at you when you preach against Hollywood and you preach against all these other wicked things and Disney and everything else? Because there's fellowship there. So they get angry with it. They don't like that. Amen. Why? Because, because they're, they're, they're still there and God's power is not with them. It's still there among them. And Achan, his profession here and uh, his confession here in, in Joshua 7.21, When I saw among the spoils a goodly Babylonian garment and 200 shekels of silver and a wedge of gold of 50 shekels weight, then I coveted them and took them, and beheld, behold, they are in, hid in the earth in the midst of my tent and the silver under it. So he had all those things. He brought them to his home. Let's pray. Father, we need you, Lord. Help us to understand this. Lord, may we be sanctified people, set apart, and meet for the Master's use. Dear God, may we have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness. May we have no fellowship with things that are wicked, things that are cursed. Help us, dear God, I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. We see this scriptural command against the cursed object. God said we are not supposed to bring in the cursed objects into our home. His command in Deuteronomy is still a moral law that is to be kept by his children today. Nothing has changed. God still doesn't want you trafficking in the accursed thing. He still does not want you to do that. He says we're not only to bring, not to bring it into our home, but we're to hate those things. We're to hate things of magic and wickedness. We're to hate those things of sorcery. We are to abhor them. We are to hate them. He said, thou shalt utterly hate them and abhor them and be disgusted with them. We're to hate the things that are mixed with the occult and other things that we're to stand against and expose them. Not join in with them. Amen. 
That is one of the reasons why I'm going to preach on yoga pretty soon, by the way. I'm going to do, it's going to be an exhaustive sermon on yoga, and I'm going to deal with that very, very, I'm going to, I'm going to deal very exhaustive. It needs to be taken. What's, I didn't say yogurt, Brother Paul. <laughs> Brother Paul, I just, uh, Brother Paul said, now yogurt's an accursed thing? Is there nothing sacred with you anymore? <laughs> can we have nothing in this church? <laughs> I can see it now. It'll be all over the internet. Pastor Cooley. Putting down yogurt. <laughs> no yogurt. Took your Winnie the Pooh and yogurt away and everything else. And you already took Disney away. You already kicked Mickey and slapped Donald. And it's all over now. Right? And you can't have Lucky Charms. It's terrible. You got everything taken away. Amen. But you know what? If we have to live our lives like that for the glory of God, let's separate from it all. Why not? What does it hurt? Go buy some generic brand that doesn't say Lucky Charms on it. <laughs> Lee likes that anyway because he saves $1.50. So he's, he's good with that. He's like, I'm good with that. I don't, I don't like those name brands anyway. Hey Amen. We're going to talk about that, that New Age mysticism. In which, you know, the, the churches today, they are filled with New Age mysticism and witchcraft. They are absolutely filled with it. It is... It is, it is it is almost in every program. It is a part of almost everything that they do now in the average churches today. They are consumed with it. And when you have ministries that reprove these things, like David Cloud and his way of life, uh, org, I don't agree with everything David Cloud says, but on a lot of things, he is pretty spot on about a lot of things when it comes to the cults and it comes to mysticism and it comes to all those things and the, and the CCM music and everything else that's infiltrated the churches. And this mysticism is completely moving into churches. It's everywhere. And uh, our, but our homes ought not be that way. Our homes ought to be a place of purity. You know, they, they ought to be a place of, of purity. That, that is the first line of defense is the home. That is, the, that, is your, that is your offensive line, really. I mean, that is your protection. That should be the base of protection right there. It should be holy. It should be separate. It should be sanctified. It should not have any unclean thing in it. Why? Because it's the, it's, it's, it's the battleground. It's the first battleground is the home. And then that, that goes on to the church. So we see trafficking in the accursed thing. If it's done in the home, it's not only going to affect the home and that person, it's going to affect the church as well. And we will, we will lose the power of God. And God said, neither will I anymore be with you until you remove the accursed thing. You destroy it. You get it out of there. In Joshua chapter 7, we see that Achan, he trafficked in the accursed thing in his home. He brought it into his home. But I want to show you how absolutely deceptive, and we'll, we'll, we'll talk about that towards the end again, but uh, how absolutely deceptive this sin is, really. Um, there's nothing in what Achan brought home that appeared to be any magic. Do you understand that? Like, there was nothing, I mean, uh, it doesn't say that that Babylonian garment was like some wizard's outfit or something, does it? It doesn't say that what he brought into his home was was inherently made of, of uh, or, or even um, in, in satanic rituals or anything. But these people, God already warned them in Deuteronomy chapter 18. He said, all these nations, they're all full of the occult. They are all full of wicked, and we're going to burn everything. You don't keep any, just burn it down. You don't keep anything. Why? Because they've all been a part of that occultic behavior. And you know what we're finding in the world today? We're finding that the things, a lot of the things that we buy, I mean, they're, they're, they're occultic. They have their occultic symbols on it. And, you know, I'm not saying that, that there's going to be things that we, we have to buy sometimes in different places. But I, I'm saying that we ought not play with these things. We ought not, they ought not be a part of our lives. They shouldn't be. We should be separated from these things. And we should, make, we should, we should teach our children why. You know why those kids didn't get mad about all that stuff? Because they've been taught why. All the way through since all the Hollywood stuff and everything else they've been taught why you know this doesn't the, the law of the lord is pure amen the law of the lord this is what we go by as a law if god says it's witchcraft then we're going to throw it away we're not going to have anything to do with it i don't care how much anybody likes it we're going to get rid of it because it doesn't honor god and we need to get it out of our lives but when we see this there's no appearance of magic here so how do we know if something's a cursed object or not because god told them 
that these things were. If, any, if God calls anything accursed, you should not have it like that. You should not be... You should not have it. If God says it's accursed, if it's anything to do with witchcraft and other things, you shouldn't, you shouldn't have it. God, God told them if they found any of these things, they were to destroy them. They were not to have them in their home. Joshua chapter 7, But the children of Israel committed a trespass in the accursed thing. For Achan, the son of Carmi, the son of Zabdi, the son of Zerah, and the tribe of Judah, of the tribe of Judah, took of the accursed thing, and the anger of the Lord was kindled against the children of Israel. Anything that God says not to touch is a cursed object. Anything that God says you should not have is a cursed object. That it's just it's cur- it's accursed. It makes me wonder how Christians believe they can listen to rock and roll music and they believe that that's not a, that that's not an accursed thing. How could you when this is this is demonic music clearly? How could you bring this demonic music into your home and think that it's okay to listen to? That it's that it's fine. It's okay. How? When you know what it's used for and what it's done, what's the use? It, what the use is of it? it? It's ridiculous. It doesn't have to say "Hail Satan" on it for it to be evil. You understand that, right? That's what most people think. No, it just has to say "Satan" on it or something. It has to be demon. No, it doesn't. There can- <laughs> Listen, there's stuff that is charged objects, amulets, coins. People keep in their homes all the time that are cursed objects they need to destroy. If you got any of those Roman Catholic type things and all that stuff, you need to get rid of them. All right, we're going to talk about that in a minute. But those things are big gateways for devils. They are big doorways, excuse me, for devils to come in. Big doorways. They, they just open up the door wide and let a lot of them in. It, it's, we've got to understand that, okay? That they are cur- Especially because they're made by those things. Now, if there's a book that uses something that describes it or shows it, that's not accursed, okay? Because it's revealing and reproving the unfruitful works of darkness. But when you have a, a book like, let's say, a Masonic book or any of these books that are teaching all this stuff or are teaching about spells and everything else, those you don't need to delve into that and read that. How you know? I, when I read you stuff, I read you very surface things. I don't go into details and depths, and I don't explain how they do things. I I don't even know because I haven't read that far. I don't want to know. Okay, I don't need to know that. All I need to know is identify what it is, show you what it is, give you a curse, a, a, a very simple understanding of it, and then move on. All right? Because we're supposed to be simple concerning evil. We're not to dig in deep into it and, 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 and study. Some of these preacher, preachers out there reading these books, and they're deal, di, uh, digging in really deep into this stuff, and it messes with your mind, and it also opens doors that you need shut. Amen? That should never be open. Amen. So, uh, we should not have anything if it violates the scriptural principles found in the Bible. Amen? Uh, what are those principles? Well, number one, to abstain from all appearance of evil. So what if it's fake magic? Ask yourself. Well, it's fake magic, right? It's not real magic. Is it an appearance of evil? Is magic evil? Is it evil? Or do you believe in good magic and bad magic? Well, certainly you do if you hold on to things that have magical symbols on it and talk about magic and you, and you, and you say that it's okay. Then, then what we're doing is we're, we're, we're believing that there's some good in that. There is no good in that. Cast it down, throw it, get it away, burn it. Get out of your home. It doesn't have any place with us. We don't need any of that. Amen. So you abstain from all appearance of evil. Principle number two, if it has anything to do with witchcraft or the occult or new age, we should not have it. If it has anything to do with those things, in the operation of them, used in their ceremonies, having a part of that, then we should have nothing to do with it. Amen. We don't, we don't, we don't want anything to do with any of those things. Because God said, he said, you should hate them and you should burn them. See, this gets into your pop culture lifestyle. This gets into your, into your everyday lifestyle. Because see, here's what we're in a mindset of, okay? And I'm going to talk about this a little bit uh, later, but uh, also, but... We think you go to the store, you go to the, like a to- for kids, you go to a toy store, you just buy something, right? I mean, first of all, where did it come from? What's the storyline of it? What is it about? We, we should ask ourselves these questions. And why do I think it's okay for my kids to play with it? So then you start, I'm going to give you a surprising one in a few minutes. But you start looking into it and you start saying, wait a minute. This is all a story about magical fairies and everything else and living in the woods or doing all this other stuff. This is, I mean, we shouldn't, do I want to promote this to my kids? Well, they don't understand that. No, but you do. Right, you do. So then I have to think, am I disobeying the principles of God here? If it's occultic in nature, if it has anything to do with that, if it's talking about magic and all this, should I have it? 
No, I shouldn't, because it violates the principles of Scripture. God said to burn those things. He said not to have any of those things, not to be a part of any of those things. So if it has, if it has anything to do with witchcraft or the occult, we shouldn't have it. Let me, here's principle number three. If it's at all questionable, don't buy it. If it's at all questionable to you, don't buy it and don't bring it into your home. Don't buy it. If you can't say this is okay or this, is, this should be good, if you can't say this doesn't, I don't see anything wicked, if you can't say that, it leaves a question in your mind, why do you need it? Nobody needs it. We don't need anything that bad like that. We just don't. Amen. For instance, if we don't know the source of toys and other things or stories behind them, we shouldn't be allowing children to play with them until we understand. Some things are more hidden than others, though. Some things are very blatant and occultic. Others are not. All Achan had was a Babylonian garment and some gold. But God forbid him. He said, don't even take their gold. You don't take their gold, their silver, which I'm going to get to, which means also that you shouldn't sell those things either. Well, I'll sell these to the heathen. No, don't sell things to the heathen and enslave them in sin. Don't do that. If they're bad, burn them. Amen? If they're that bad, burn them. Because we're not to profit off of that. I've done a lot of things I regret, and that's some, of, some of the books I've sold before, I didn't understand any of that stuff. And I was, I was just, you know, didn't think anything about it, really. And I just sold it. I mean, I would sell books for $100, make $100 off something I bought for a quarter and put it on eBay, and man, it would just go. But if it's wicked, if it's false doctrine like that, I mean, there's, diff there's a difference in damnable heresies and wickedness, and just we have a difference on the rapture or something, okay? I'm not talking about that, okay? I'm talking about if they're it, like Mormon books, JW books, things like that. We shouldn't be selling those to a lost and dying world. We don't know who they're going to. And even if we do, we should burn them and get them out of the market. Rome has been very successful on stealing old Baptist books and burning them. Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. Amen. Deuteronomy chapter 18. Turn there, please. Deuteronomy chapter 18, verse number 10. I guess we don't think it's that important sometimes that we should not be trafficking in the accursed thing. We don't think it's that important or that big of a deal, you know, that, uh, that we bring things into our home that might be linked to the occult or might be a charged object like we talked about in the first hour. It might be something that's charged with demons. We don't know. Certainly if it has occultic underlines and its storylines and everything, that means that you and I shouldn't be messing with it. There's nothing redeemable about it. Because no... no, no uh, Good ever came from evil. Amen. Think about that. Deuteronomy 18.10. There shall not be found among you anyone that maketh his son or his daughter to pass through the fire, or that useth divination, or an observer of times, or an enchanter, or a witch, or a charmer, or a consulter with familiar spirits, or a wizard, or a necromancer. For all that do these things are an abomination to the Lord. And because of these abominations, the Lord thy God doth drive them out from before thee. He said, I drove them out because they were a bunch of witches. I drove them out because they were a bunch of witches and warlocks. So why would I let you, why would I want you to be a part of those things? You have been called out of the world. You and I have been called out of the world. Boy, that's tough, isn't it? Because this whole world's got a good hold on us, doesn't it, when we leave? It's got a good, it's kicking and scraw, uh, we're kicking away and, and, and it's scratching and pulling on us and trying to keep us and we are to separate from it and to walk away from it and have no fellowship with these things. Anything that, that is used to do these things are an abomination to God. So I'm going to start, I'm going I'm to name some of these things, okay? Then we're going to talk about cleansing your home at the end, spring cleaning, spiritual spring cleaning, amen? I want you to think about some of this. Um, first off, unicorns, okay? Yeah. Unicorns. Now, the unicorn that's in the Bible is not the unicorn that is, is popular today with that one wicked horn sticking out. That is a mystical creature. And it is said by some that that unicorn is the, is, is the, the pale rider that comes back and is going to be riding on that unicorn. Okay, that's what Satanist witches and some of them believe. About that, that, that they'll actually, he'll actually be riding on one of those. Pegasus is another one, by the way, that is, that is wicked that you shouldn't have. So if you have statues of unicorns and things like that, you say, are you saying there's demonic activity there? I don't know. What I am telling you is, is that it shouldn't be in your home. 
This is now some of this comes from an, a man that was an ex witch. Okay, he wrote for Chick Publications, and he was an ex witch, and he got saved. Okay, he got called out of that, and he and he gave the truth about these things, what he was mixed up with, and he's also part of a deliverance ministry. Now, not all those ministries are false, by the way. Baptists don't like those ministries because they don't believe there's demons out there for some reason. I don't know why. They have a bunch of them around them, most of them. But anyway, they don't they don't believe that that they're a part of anything. Um, and here's, here's the real problem, okay? When you don't believe that, then you believe that every phony, charismatic deliverance ministry out there and everything else is all there is, and there isn't really people that get delivered from devils. But let me tell you something. If you're right with God, and you follow the Lord Jesus Christ, and you follow his book, you will see people delivered from devils. Amen. Right. You will see that. Why? Because God promised it. It's not the will of the Lord that people be possessed with devils. Amen. It's not. But it's also not the will of the Lord for you to traffic in the accursed thing. And I just wonder if we can't see some of these things sometimes because we're so clouded by the world and our discernment is so clouded because we're so stuck in everything. Amen. Unicorns originally associated with Christ. These horned horses have become so associated with the New Age and occult in the past generations that we advise caution. So he's talking about that. Crystals, if they're charged by New Age gurus or mediums, a lot of crystals, you got to be careful about that because there's people that mess around with those crystals. They walk around hanging them on their neck. They don't know what's in it. They don't know what they are. They don't know where they come from. Okay? You're saying all crystals? No, I'm not saying all. I'm saying where did they come from? What are they? Where did they How do you know somebody didn't charge them? Who makes them? Who, who sells them? What's their motive behind it? I mean, and I, if, I, if I had to abstain from all appearance of evil, I might stay, I'd probably stay away from that. I probably would stay away from that because I don't know where it came from, okay? I, I, don't, I don't know what's going on with that. And, uh, and he has seen, uh, this man says that he has seen, he, him and his wife had seen a lot of people that had problems. And, and some of the main problems that, that he found was with these objects. That they had demonic activity with these objects, okay? Uh, hex signs, all right? Um, obviously, we know what those are. But, um, you know, yeah, yeah, the Pennsylvania Dutch. Sorry, Nate. I'll give you a picture of it here in a minute. If I find it here. Anyway, uh, hex signs there, that those, are, those are part of that as well. And, oh, here's a hex sign right here. Here you go. See that? Better straighten your eyes back there. I'm not walking back. I'm just kidding. Brother Nate, you know what that sign is, Brother Nate, don't you? You've seen that? See that? Okay. <laughs> yeah. Uh, it probably is, yeah. Uh, the hex sign, Pennsylvania Dutch, also called painted prayers. These circular and colorful designs seen on farms and barns in Pennsylvania and elsewhere are actually occult talismans. Their foundational s symbols are drawn from occult workbooks. I believe that. I've met some crazy people from Pennsylvania. I'm just Oops. <laughs> How about the Italian horn? Okay. The Italian horn right underneath it. Sorry if you're Italian. Don't wear this horn. Okay. See that? If you're not Italian, don't wear this horn. All right. All right. Italian horn. Okay. The Italian horn. This is said to represent a unicorn horn and often worn by men to increase their reproductive power. Okay? It's a talisman to provoke lust and should not be worn by Christians. <clears throat> All right. Uh, let's see. Pegasus, winged horse. You know what those look like. You've seen those. I've seen a lot of people with those statues like that. Not a good idea. I don't see anywhere in the scripture where that was, where that was a, a biblical animal or anything like that. Where does it come from? It comes from the occult. That's where it comes from. Uh, sunbursts or sunstones actually symbols of Baal. So uh, you, you you can look up some of these things. I don't I don't have pictures of all of these things. I don't believe, but uh, some of those are in there. All right, uh, occult toys. Now I want you to listen to the, these toys. Are very interesting. Um, they're, they're definitely kind of weird, actually. Um, one of the ones that my wife and I just threw away when we just found this out in studying it were Cabbage Patch dolls. Okay? 
Um, I didn't know anything about them. I mean, I. Well, this is one of their weird birth certificates from one of these Cabbage Patch dolls, okay? And they have these little birth certificates. And there's an oath of adoption, okay? I hope you understand this. This is a covenant that you're making. Do you understand that? Yeah, it's, it's called the oath of adoption. When you take these things on, uh, these cabbage patches, in front of another person, raise your right hand and say, what? yeah, I, I mean, we didn't do this, but <laughs> I just bought the thing. But, but to, <laughs> Yeah, right. But I mean, I didn't do it because I didn't, but it was here. It was there. So in front of the, another person, raise your right hand and say, I promise to love my cabbage patch kid with all my heart, and I promise to be a good and kind parent. I will always remember how special my Cabbage Patch Kid is to me. And then, isn't that weird? It's like, it's really strange. I'd never even seen this before, but then I, I found it the other day when we threw it away. Um, this certifies that, whatever the name of it was, uh, Cabbage Patch on and was adopted by, you know, and it came out of the Cabbage Patch or whatever. But do you know what this is about? What happens is there's these little fairy bunnies that come flying through. And they, they, they pour down these magic crystals on these, bu- on these Cabbage Patch dolls, and they make them grow into babies. And there's a boy one, and there's a girl one. And whichever does the most magic dust stuff or whatever, that's what becomes the boy or girl, depending on which one does that. Now, all of it is steeped in, in the occult. It has nothing to do with anything that we should be a part of. Why would we support anything like that? See, it just goes to show you that even, even the people with sincerest intentions like myself to live for the Lord can fall for these things and have them in your home and not even know it. You know? I mean, before, before you even know it, you, you, you have all these things and you, you have no clue that that's what it's about. You know what I mean? You have no clue that that's, um, you know, that that's... Um, and, and he, he mentions here in the back of his book, he mentions how he, there were several children that were very oppressed by those things, devilishly oppressed, to the point that if their parents tried to take them away from them, they would lose it. Over that doll, they would just lose it. Well, I mean, it makes sense if it's a steeped in the occult and it's talking about magic and there's some kind of oath that you take. First of all, you and I are not allowed to take oaths like this. You say it's just for pretend. I don't care. It's not for pretend. You're actually doing it. If you take this oath, you're actually making an oath and you're doing that. You're teaching your children to make an oath. That's not a real kid. Okay, that's not a child. That's a doll. And it talks about, well, the doll's personality and all this stuff. That is occultic behavior. That is not normal. Now, most people that buy them don't even follow any of that stuff. They just buy one, throw it on their shelf, or a kid plays with it. They don't know. But when you start to investigate it, now that you know, what would you do? Would you throw it away or would you keep it? Think about it. Anyway, uh, occult toys, man, there's so many of these. Obviously, Harry Potter stuff, that's just, that's just outright blatant stuff, okay? You understand that's wicked. I mean, nobody needs to explain that to you, really. Um, the, their books, their movies. Oh, by the way, another place that gets you is McDonald's. I'm sorry, Lee. I'm sorry. Okay? But, <laughs> the, 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 but the, the, the Happy Meals at McDonald's, yeah. The Happy I know you don't. The Happy Meals at McDonald's, they have those little toys in them. Nine times out of ten, they're all occultic. I'm telling you, they're all magic. They're all about some sort of magic. If you read the storyline behind them, they're about some sort of magic. You say, well, those, well, I don't know. God said to have no fellowship with that stuff. Right? He said none. So, oh, it's fake. It's not real. Okay. But they think, they're, they're saying that this is magical. They're saying the storyline is magical. So you and I, what do we teach our children? Do we teach them magic is fake and it's just fun and it's just a game? Or do we teach them that it's real? You know why? You know why so many fundy kids grow up and they leave the church and they run out in the world and half of them become witches probably? You want to know why? Because their preacher didn't tell them it was real. That's why. He didn't preach to them that it was real. He didn't warn them about the reality of, of wicked of the, and wickedness of witchcraft and sorcery and those powers. He didn't warn them of those things. That's right. It does start out with a Happy Meal, doesn't it? How, a basic... A ba- I mean, so, so there's two kinds of poison in there. Anyway, I'm moving on. All right, next. 
Couldn't help it. Had to get that dig in there. Okay. <laughs> a Ouija board. I mean, that you would think that would be like a no-brainer, right? That nobody would, no Christian would even think about having a Ouija board. But now they make little girly Ouija boards. Okay, they make little pink ones for little girls. So, you know, you can, take, you can buy this for your little girl and take it home, and your little girl can play with a Ouija board. What do you teach them? You're teaching them witchcraft because that's what witches do. They start them out young. See, you think, oh, they just want to make money. No, they want to bring them into the occult. That's what they're doing. You don't, you're, don't, you, you know, you can't think, see, I, I guess I'm bad because I always think the worst, okay? I, 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 when I see things like that, I always think there's a motive behind it to destroy people. And I know how wicked the devil is, and he wants to destroy people. So he's going to do it with, and he wants to start with children. And he wants to initiate them into the occult and show them demonic things right away when they're young. And attract them to that. I, when I was a kid, I was completely attracted to stuff with magic. Man, I loved it. I loved all the superhero stuff. I loved all the magic stuff. I loved all the movies with magic. I, liked all, I loved it. I loved all of it. I, thought, I, I always wanted to watch them and everything. All right? I mean, obviously, these, some of these things are old, but, uh, you know, I think the Power Rangers are still around, aren't they? They, like, they, they morph into something all the time, man. There's like 100,000 of those things now. I mean, there was just so many of them. But anyway, stuff like the Power Rangers, the Smurfs, My Little Pony, that's another one. My Little Pony. Yeah, those things are, those things. No. Go ahead. Guys buy My Little Pony stuff. They're called. What are they called? <laughs> They're called bronies. <laughs> Nate, you know too much stuff. <laughs> There's a documentary about bronies. Guys that run around buying My Little Ponies. Wow. Okay. Scary. All right. But anyway, My Little Pony steeped in witchcraft, steeped in the occult. Stay away from it. In fact, someday, Brother Nate and I, we're talking about doing a series on, we've talked about that, and we're going to do that some, on children's toys and cartoons on our radio program. And we're going to really show like how the top ten cartoons out there right now all teach the occult. That's what they're doing. They're teaching, they're initiating them into the occult, getting them used to magic and everything. What's that? Yeah, Monster Yeah, Yeah, Monster Eye. Yeah, all that stuff. It's just crazy. Uh, this, the World of Warcraft games. All witchcraft. All that stuff is nothing but witchcraft and should not be played by the child of God. In fact, any video games that deal with magic inside of them that show spells and magic and talk about magic powers, they should not be played at all. They should not be in your home. You should get rid of them. They are not right to have. Either we are on the Lord's side or we are not. Either we are a friend of the Lord or we are a friend of the world. We have to choose which side we're on. But if we bring those evil things into our home, we are not separating ourselves from the world. And you know what? Sometimes it's going to be a battle, especially when kids get older and they, you know, they, they haven't grown up doing right and the parents haven't done right and, and they want to battle it. They want to fight it. But you know what? You've got to trust the Lord and you've got to obey God. And you've got to do right. Amen. Uh, another one, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles is another one. If you, if you understand the history of them, I used to love the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles too, by the way. You met them? Stop it, they're not real. You went to Disney World? What am I finding out about you today? Aaron, I didn't know he went to Disney World. Oh, okay. You were seven. I thought it was like a couple years ago or something. I was getting a little nervous. All right. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, they teach witchcraft. Think about this. From a talking rat, but most of the things they teach is actually... I mean, you got a talking rat there, so the rat boy. And he's sitting there, he's, he's, he's like talking, teaching all these mystical, ancient, you know... Uh, rituals and things like that. I mean, morphing into different animals, talking and, and changing into different uh, things. Uh, that's all part of witchcraft. What's that? Taoism. Yep, yep, yep. Definitely. I haven't seen that one, no. 
I didn't see it. But yeah, so it's, 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 it's witchcraft that should be separated from, all right? Uh, Dungeons and Dragons, obviously, that's kind of old, but people still are into Dungeons and Dragons. And games that are like Dungeons and Dragons, they should not be a part of, what's that? Yeah, role, the, some of these role-playing games that deal with witches and warlocks and murder and death and all that mayhem and all that stuff, shouldn't be. Yeah. That's what they call it? That's what that guy was, you mean the guy that said shield members cannot be recorded? That guy? He, he was live-action role-playing me the whole time. Well, actually, he was coming in and out of character because he talked about being a Christian. It was really weird, but... All right, so Dungeons and Dragons, bad stuff. Pokemon, very evil. Always been evil. Pokemon, Yu-Gi-Oh, whatever they... Do they still have those cards, don't they? And Magic, the Gathering, those kind of cards. All of those things are wicked. Think about I mean, the name ought to tell you all you need to know. But a lot of this stuff is are names for Japanese devils and demons and, and uh, entities and deities, Japanese deities, they call them, and things like that. Uh, you better be careful about Japanese animation, too, as well, because a lot of that stuff is, and we're going to do a radio show on Japanese animation specifically, but a lot of that stuff is just steeped in the occult. It is, it's, it's just straight-up witchcraft. It is very wicked. So, you know, you're going to have to, some of these things you're going to have to search yourself out, but they should be obvious, some of these things. Uh, vampire stuff. Vampire werewolf stuff. All of that stuff should not be watched or played with or toys about it or anything else. It should not be. It's wicked. It's all evil in the sight of the Lord. See, this is, this is where the rubber meets the road for the Christian life. This is where we decide we will follow Christ or we will hold on to the world. No man that warreth entangled himself with the affairs of this life. And there's too many soldiers that are entangled and they can't war. They can't war a good warfare. Why? Because they, they're like Samson when he, when he lost his hair and he wist not that the Lord had departed from him. And he was bound by these chains. And before he could rip doors off and chains off when he followed God. But when he got into sin and, he gave, and, he, and, he, and the secrets of his consecration were discovered and he was no longer consecrated to God, what could he do? Nothing! And that's how, that's how many children of God are today. They cannot fight because they are still hooked into the witchcraft. They're still, yeah, they'll fight you. Liberal Christians will fight you. They'll get mad at you for telling the truth. All right. Uh, we talked about the, co- the Cabbage Patch uh, stuff. Also, Disney stuff. Disney's all wicked. I mean, there's just nothing good about Disney. I mean, you, just, you cannot think of one redeemable good thing about Disney. All right. It's, it's just wicked to the core. Everything about it is steeped in magic. Um, everything about it is, is it's either effeminate or it's about magic. It's about rebellion. Disney's whole Disney ought to just say their whole line is not is not the magic. It's the magic kingdom of rebellion is what it ought to be called because that's all that it is is a magic kingdom of rebellion. That's everything they push is rebellion. Everything. It's rebellion to God. It's rebellion to order. It's it's uh, it's like Aleister Crowley's mantra. Okay. It is just it's it's exactly the same. It's very wicked. Um, and we need to stay away from those things. Things having to deal with magic. All of these things, they don't, do not need to be in your home. You cannot bring them into your home. You've got to keep them away. You've got to get rid of them, and you've got to destroy them. Jewelry. There are a lot of different jewelry. You've got to be careful with your jewelry, what's on that. Look at what's on those things. Look at the design that's on it, where it comes from. What it's, you know, you've got to look at it and see what's on there. Um, you know, we talked about pentagrams, hexagrams, um, onks. Okay, that you know what that is, Nate. Did we ever determine if that's what Constantine saw? Yeah, those Israel flags. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. That's a, that's an onk. That's not a cross, by the way. That's an onk. You see that? Yeah. Well, that's an onk. Okay, that's not a cross. And many people have these. Okay. And, and you'll see them around in different clothing. Don't buy your kids clothing that have these things on them either, because we're not advertising for the occult, okay? Amen! We're not doing that. We're not going to have any of that stuff. Okay, so anyway, just remember that. Uh, and onks are very, they're very popular. And this is the inverted pentagram and the, and the upright pentagram, by the way. And by the way, don't be flying the Israeli flag either. The star of your God, Rem fan. Don't be doing that, okay? Amen! That makes the people mad, won't it? 
I'm going to probably be called an anti-Semite and everything else. I'm not an anti-Semite, but I do know that, that Israel's government has been co-opted by the New World Order, by the Jesuits, just like every other government of this country has, or of this world has. And it is ran by the New World Order. Sure, are there good people over there? Yeah, don't demonize those people over there. Understand the governments are all co-opted. They are people just like you that want to live their lives and have freedom and everything else. They, they, they're not the, this, these... Um, bent on destroying the world type people. That, that is the higher, upper level elites that run everything, okay? Just like over here, you talk to the average American, they don't want to destroy anybody. You think average Americans really want to go war everywhere? No, it's usually the Christians that want to for some reason. I don't know why. But they, they want to, the fundamentalist Christians think they got to, got to go to war, stay the course, and destroy Muslims. I don't know what it is, but that's what they think. I don't know where they get that charge from, but uh, it could be because they're running around with a satanic flag that they're, that they're, that they're what's that? From Fox News, yeah, Fox News, yeah, exactly, where they take most of their sermons from, but anyway, um, so, uh, but those, 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 uh, the, the star of your God, Rempan, that's not a biblical, and if you talk to most of those people, they're, they're not, they're not Jews like Old Testament Jews, okay, they're not. You know, a lot of them are Kabbalists, a lot of them are other, but you know what, they need to be saved just like you. They're no dirtier or wicked than you are, okay? They need to be saved just like that. Uh, you got Anderson doing these videos over there about how the Jews run the world. What a joke. I, I can't wait to expose that stinking, rotten, stupid video of his and prove all of it to be, or 90% to be completely false. Because he's a liar, and he's, and not, he's nothing but a gatekeeper is all he is. But anyway... Um, so those people need to be saved just like anybody else's. But that flag is the star of your God, Remphan. It's not, it's not, um, it's not, there's, I mean, I don't know what, I've never heard of a star of David in the Bible, have you? I've never seen that star of David in the Bible. So anyway, um, skull and crossbones, also symbol of the God of witchcraft. You've seen some of those before. Uh, the SS runes, the Nazi symbols of the, of the initials of the horn God of witchcraft. That's that right there. Have you seen that anywhere before, anybody? Lady Gaga's face? I hate looking at Lady Gaga's face. But, uh, uh huh? Yeah, stop it. Stop it. <laughs> Amen. All right. Um, what? Lady Gaga's face. <laughs> I, I don't know where it's at anywhere else. I mean, I, it's probably everywhere. You just have to look for it, but it, it'll be in different places. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. Marilyn Manson used it. Uh, a lot of the rockers, the occultic rockers, everybody else. Okay, um, what's that? Kiss. Oh, that's right. That's where I've seen. I thought I saw that either ZZ Top or Kiss or something. I could not remember. Slayer? Wow. Wow, wow, wow. Okay. Um, some Native American jewelry also. You've got to be careful about some of, some of that Native American jewelry and, and that stuff is, I mean, it is, they are charged objects. They are full of devils, okay? Uh, the, these, yeah, those dolls. I'm going to talk about those dolls in a minute, those weird, spooky-looking dolls. A lot of people collect those little Indian dolls, and they look kind of funny. Um, but I'll get to their name in a second here. Uh, Catholic paraphernalia. Rosaries. Rosaries are rooted in Hindu mantra. Repetitious name praying, which the Bible forbids. Repetitious name, just like that's the rosary. It's, it's satanic. It's wicked. Um, also wicked movies, obviously, uh, books by Tolkien, Lewis and other guys like that. They're all initiations of the cult. They're not good to have. J.R. Tolkien's a wicked, was a wicked man. And, uh, obviously you've heard the sermons on C.S. Lewis. So you understand about that. Uh, birthstone jewelry, birthstone jewelry, uh, borderline depends on the intent of the person is what, is what, uh, uh, this, the author says, but, uh, but you, you got to be careful with that stuff, okay? Because a lot of people use those things as lucky charms and everything. And you don't know where you're getting this stuff from, okay? You know, this stuff is, these people, these, these witches will charge these things, put them in Christians' homes. Why? For the same reason, so they can curse you because you cannot curse your, you, you cannot be cursed by them, but you could bring a curse into your home. So use it. Where'd it come from? No idea. Got to be careful. If I have no idea where it come from, I better be careful, Right? What the intent is with that and everything. I, I just think you got to stay away from that stuff. Uh, Masonic, Masonic stuff, Masonic paraphernalia and things. Uh, aprons, sashes, rings, jewelry of any, of any kind. Okay. Yes, the little go-kart. You leave it alone. You're not playing with that little Shriner cart. But you need, he wants to play with the clown car. 
or the Fez. We're going to talk about the Fez. I mean the Fez. But um, uh, let's see here. Yeah, aprons, sashes, all those things. The Shriner Fezes. You know that red, red hat, yeah, red fezzy thing for blood, right? Is that what it was? What's that? Wasn't that the blood of the saints? Is that what that was? Oh, yeah, for Muslims killing Christians. That's what that is, right? Yep. Of course they deny it. Eastern star stuff. Stuff from any of those Masonic odd fellows, any of those cults, they're Masonic stuff. Get rid of it. You don't need it. Any of those, those uh, occultic type uh, things, any of those groups, Eastern Star, any of them, uh, the ladies groups, uh, I think the odd fellows have the Order of Rebecca or something like that. Any of those things, none of those things should be a part of the child of God's life. Amen? Uh, books by Masons or ritual monitors. You don't need those books by Masonic Masons. That, well, we need to know about the, you know, the, the order. I had somebody give me that. Remember that one? I ripped it up and threw it away. Remember that one book? By the, yeah, remember that one book by the Masons? I ripped it up and threw it away because I didn't want it in my house. Because if you start looking at what it is, he's telling you all the darkness of what they're doing and how they're doing it. And we don't need to have that. We don't need to go play by play by what they're doing. We just need to, we need to tell that it's evil, show why it's evil, but then not dig it deep into those things because we've got to be careful about that. Amen. What's that? Yeah, our first meeting when we meet about the radio show, I ripped it up right there, and, and uh, that's right. All right, the Book of Mormon, the Book of Moron, <laughs> it's a book of Mor- Pearl of a Great Price, Doctrines and Covenants, and other LDS books. These people are devils. We don't want their books. They're devils. Why do we want their books? We don't want their stuff. And he goes on to say, Jehovah's Witnesses literature are Bibles. He said some of those perversions cause some really crazy activity that he's noticed from some people. Um, other, listen to this, Brother Paul. Other apostate Bible translations, NIV, NAS, RSV. He said some of those, because why? They're demonic. That's not the Word of God. Amen? Yep. Yep. Pornography is another way to open the door for devils to come in. Pornography is a huge way that destroys lives, and it, it, it's an addiction that is just so deep-seated, and uh, it takes a lot to get out. I mean, it's really wicked, and it sticks with you. Proverbs chapter 9, verse number 18 tells us why, though. But he knoweth not that the dead are there, and that her guests are in the depths of hell. What is that? Those dead, I'm not, I'm not trying to correct the Bible. I'm not correcting. It's the same thing, but that word dead is the same word as Rapha. Those are those unclean evil spirits that roam the earth. They knoweth not that the dead are there. That's what the, that, that word dead means right there. The dead. And her depths are in, the, in hell. Well, where else are the dead at? They're in hell, but he's saying that you're, they're putting them right in hell with these demonic spirits. For her house inclineth unto death, in Proverbs 2.18, and her paths unto the dead. You know, fornication and sexual deviancy and everything else, it brings forth spirits. You have to understand that. So people don't understand. This is one of the main things that people, that immoral, wicked behavior, sexual behavior, bring for, brings forth wicked spirits. It conjures them up. It's part of their ceremonies. It's part of what they do. That's why pornography and all those things have to be completely denounced and repented of and prayed about. Right, that's what the OTO is based off. That, that was the order Aleister Crowley had. And the OTO, they're based off of that. It was called sex magic is what he called it. That's, that's right, Constantine, that's right. But, it, but that's, that's what it's called. Okay? Because that's what they do. And pornography is so addictive. It brings the spirits of lust and whoredom with it. It's a spirit that comes with that. And it's a wicked, vile bunch of spirits. And it is, it is one thing that is very hard to shake for people. They must get saved first, obviously. But that stuff, those, the, it just it burns an image. Got to be careful. Amen? Got to be careful. Oh, man, I got to keep going here. I'm almost done. Astrology. Nothing to do with astrology. You shouldn't have any of those uh, horoscopes. Don't read those horoscopes. That's wicked as hell. Don't read those things. That is absolutely witchcraft. Looking at the moon and saying that the full of the moon, all, this, all that stuff is witchcraft. It's wicked. You don't need to know anything that some devil tries to tell you. And in Chinese restaurants, those 
fortune cookies and stuff. Don't read that junk. Throw that junk away. You don't need any of that stuff. You don't need to read that garbage. Because what that's doing, it's playing into that. Do you understand? Into fate and chance and all those other things. Why would we, when we have the perfect will of God right here and his book, why would we ever give any credence to some stupid mystics? Amen. We don't want to have anything to do with that stuff. It's witchcraft. It's wicked. Don't read them. Throw them away. You don't need them. And don't read those stupid Zodiac things that are sitting right there on the table that they try to give you when they put in there, like they'll put a, a little placemat in there. I'm just thinking of this. This stuff's coming up. But this, that, that stuff right there, don't read those things. Who cares what they say you are? Who cares what they say? Oh, you're a Scorpio or you're this or you're that. I don't care what you say. I'm, I'm God's child, you devil. I'm none of your garbage. I don't follow your stupid charts. You bunch of witches. Hate that garbage. Don't be sucked into that garbage. Don't read any of that stuff. That doesn't define your life. This book defines your life. Tea leaf reading. Uh, reading palms. I remember before I was saved a long time ago. Dad, you remember that lady that was always trying to... She was a Korean lady. Eastern Mississippi. She was, she was always reading people. I, wouldn't, I don't think I let her touch me, man. I just... I, that stuff just... It was weird. I didn't want anything to do with that. Even back then, I knew. I wasn't saved, but I was like, I don't want that lady touching me. It's a weirdos. Looking at my hand and seeing what's going on your, you know, in your life. And I'm telling you, there's some, there's some devils attached to that stuff. All right? That's real. Uh, so, you know, um, that's right, they do. They want to they impart something to you. That's what they want to do. They're wicked. Uh, let's see. He says, I Ching. Uh, coiner Yarrow uh, stalk method. I'm not sure what that is exactly, but but anyway, stay away from it. <laughs> if you don't know, stay away from it. Amen. Spiritualism, channeling or mediums. I'm going to tell you something. You better watch these psych- these psychiatrists, these other people that are out there, because psychiatry is nothing but, and psychology is full of devils, is what it is. It is it's demonic activity. It is trying to to take over the mind and control someone else's mind. It's mind control. It's very manipulating. It manipulates you. They can even put they can put thoughts into your head that never actually happen to you. You know, you wonder sometimes people are accused of things, fathers and mothers are accused of things, and some of them never did anything. Okay? I'm not saying that doesn't happen, because it does happen in ritualistic satanic abuse is real, okay? But there are some people that probably never did anything. That there, and there's no other proof besides what some psychiatrist tries to choke out of somebody and get out of it, and nobody else is a witness to any of it, but they're making it up. Okay, not to say that it doesn't happen. It is real. It's very real. But there's also these people, they like to put things in people's heads too. Right, or change who did it. That's right, and make it somebody else. It's wicked, folks. You know, there, it's a level that is, when we talk about mind control on a radio show, we'll cover it, and we'll deal with that and, and show you that that's real. That stuff is very real. Okay, um, so you stay away from that stuff. Visualization and some kinds of inner healing. You've got to be careful about that stuff. I want you to visualize something. Why? No. No, that's like yoga and other things, you know, or empty your mind, that type of stuff. You don't do that. Angel healing or therapy. Wicked. Some practices of alternative or holistic health. Sometimes they get into the occult stuff and they get into, you know, uh, spiritism with that and they mix it with it. They're not talking about healing you with like herbs and things from the earth and stuff like that. They're talking about healing you with, uh, by other means. Yeah, Reiki and other things like that, right? So, I mean, there's, there's some things. Psychic healers. Stay away from that stuff. Psychic surgery. Some motivational or self-improvement cults. Which I think most of them are, by the way. You don't need self-improvement. You need Christ improvement. EST or the Forum. Silva Mind Control. Dianetics or Scientology. Any of their stuff. That stuff's wicked. Aleister Crowley was a part of Dianetics and Scientology. Uh, Jack Parsons. Yeah, L. Ron Hubbard. And then what was the other guy? The rock propulsion guy. Uh, Jack Parsons. They teamed up and did a bunch of stuff together. And they worked with Aleister Crowley, or one of them did. They were, they were students of him, right? And they had the sons of, uh, didn't they call their, they had a page before, or they, I mean, they had a, a cult that they called um, the Sons of Lamb or something. I don't know what it was, but it was before, what's that? Yeah, yeah, that's Disney, yeah, that's Disney, he, he, he had his own, yeah, it was, that was his, there's a picture of Walt Disney with Jack, 
with that, is it John Parsons or whatever his name is? Jack Parsons. And there's a name, there's a picture with him with that rocket and Walt Disney is standing next to him. That Walt Disney was a creepy dude, man. Yeah, he was creepy. Anyway, uh, possibility thinking by Robert Schuller. And I would include Joel Olstein's books too, by the way. Those are witchcraft. Uh, Rick Warren's, Joel Olstein, those guys are just pumping the word of faith movement. Uh, yeah, faith, the Word of Faith movement or whatever, the, the, all those guys, Kenneth Copeland, Hagen, all those guys, a bunch of a wicked devils is what they are. They're speaking witchcraft is what they are. It's all witchcraft. Stay away from that stuff. Four Temperament Teaching by Tim LaHaye. You ever heard that teaching? Dad, remember that when we were young? I was really young. I remember that. They taught, well, melancholy, pragmatic, all this stuff, and this is defined, and this is the way you are, right? This is the way. What a bunch of load of garbage. You know what it came from? It came from a pagan. Much of it was taught in, ex- in the extreme word faith. Uh, it came from a pagan that, um, what was his name? I don't know if I have it in here. Let me see uh, if it's in here. Let's see. Give me one second here. I want to see if I can find that about him. Because uh, Tim LaHaye has done a lot of bad stuff, actually. Uh, Nate, what was, the, what was he a part of? Yeah, which is the counterpart to the Council of Foreign Relations, right? Some, yeah. Yeah, yeah. He's a wicked, Tim LaHaye's a wicked guy. You need to stay away from him. Uh, anyway, I can't find that. But it was a pagan that invented that. Okay, that melancholy, pragmatic, well, this is how you are. You're a pragmatic. So this is how you deal with a pragmatic. So this is how you deal with a melancholy person. So this is how you deal with this type of person. And this structure, well, how about the Bible tells us how to deal with it, with everything? And your problems are sin problems. Your problems are spiritual problems. And you just need to get right with God and quit being so stuck on yourself because you ain't that good. Amen. Well, that's some cheap psychology right there. Amen. No, that's just the Bible for you. All them sin and come short of the glory of God. You've got some problems and they're spiritual problems. Get right with God and you won't have them. Amen. That's how you deal with a strong-willed child. That's right. <laughs> All right, and in closing here, Aiken trafficked in the accursed things. He brought, and there's many more things. Listen, folks, I mean, the list could go on and on and on. I mean, you could just, there's so many things in this world. But if you follow those principles, you'll be fine. But look what happened. Aiken trafficked in the accursed thing. Israel had no power to stand before their enemies. Joshua 7, 12 says this, Therefore the children of Israel could not stand before their enemies, but turned their backs before their enemies because they were accursed. Neither will I be... Look, because they were accursed. Why? Because their enemies cursed them? No, because they cursed themselves. Death came from trafficking in the accursed thing. Death. 37 men lost their lives that day that they went to war. By the way, no growth will come if we allow wickedness about us. After God has revealed it to us and we allow it, we won't grow. Deuteronomy 7.25 says this, Their graven images, the graven images of their gods, shall ye burn with fire. Thou shalt not desire the silver or gold that is on them, nor take it unto thee, lest thou be snared therein. For it is an abomination to the Lord thy God. What's that mean? That means you and I shouldn't sell it. We should get rid of it. We should burn it, crush it up, whatever we have to do. Achan trafficked in the accursed thing and brought judgment on the whole house because of it. Everybody died because of Achan. 37 people and his whole family died. All of his family. Let me tell you something. It first starts at home. Your spiritual walk first starts at home. If the home is not right, the church will not be right. Amen? We will not have the power of God. That is the first line right there. That is the first line of defense right there is the home. It's the first line of offense. It's the first line. Of, it's, the, it's the battle line right there. It's the battleground right there. The home to protect it. It's the home base and it should be strong. It should be fortified. It should be, it, it should be prayed for. It should, we should pray against wickedness that it not enter our home. And we should keep our homes strong and spiritual places where God wants to dwell with us. Do you understand? I don't talk about the Holy Ghost stealing you. I understand that. I mean where God Almighty would be comfortable coming into your home and dwelling there with you, fellowshipping with you, and sending His Spirit's power there. Do you understand that? 
You ought to have a desire for your home. You know, when the Israelites went through, God told them that they needed to go ease themselves abroad outside of the camp, right? And they had a paddle, and they would shovel that. They would bury, they would dig it, and they would bury their, their, uh, uh, their well, their waste. Thank you. That's a better word. Thank you. I was going to use something else. But they would bury their waste, amen? And they would bury it. Why? Because God said, I walk in the midst of your camp, lest I, lest I see any of this wickedness. I don't want to see any of these unclean things when I come in. So what is God saying to us? If you want my power and my fellowship, if you want me to pour my spirit upon you and give you your power, I want to be able to walk in the midst of your homes, in the midst of your camp, and I don't want to, I don't want to see anything that is defiling. I don't want to see any unclean thing. Why? So that I can give you my power. That's why. So I can give you my power. So then you can stand before your enemies. So then you can go out and stand against the wicked works. Why? Because your home is pure. It's not defiled. And God walks in the midst of it. And gives his grace and his power. And then then unclean spirits and those things are like, will not have any desire to be in that home. They will depart from that. Under the authority of the word of God. Amen. Acts chapter 19 says in verse number 18, And many that believed came and confessed and showed their deeds. And many of them also which used curious arts brought their books together and burned them before all men. They, just, they took them out. Man, they took everything that was defiling and they burned them in front of everybody. Man, then people were like, what are you guys doing? And they counted the price of them and found it 50,000 pieces of silver. They added up what it would have been worth. 50,000 pieces of silver and they threw it all. They burned it all. Yeah, that's right, nothing but dung. They burned it all. Why? Because they wanted to be right with God. They had a revenge against sin, and they wanted to stand up, and they said, I'll have nothing to do with these things. They didn't sell them to the pagans, to the lost. They burned them, and they got rid of them. If we want to battle the devils and his kingdom, we must put away the cursed or charged objects from us. We must not touch the unclean thing, as God promised that he will be with us if we touch not the unclean thing. He said, I'll, I'll fellowship with you if you touch not the unclean thing. You wonder why people today in church, we don't have the power of God. Could it be because our homes are full of accursed things? Could it be because there's things that we need to get rid of, man? We just need to get right with God about some things and start taking a, and start looking at things and being like, you know what? I don't think, I don't like that. I'm already thinking of some other things right now while I'm preaching this that I'm going to go home and I'm going to get rid of. Just some things that I just thought of while I was preaching I, that the Lord brought to my attention. I'm going to go get rid of them. Why? Because I, I don't like it. I want to be right with God. You may not think it's a big deal. Somebody else might. I think it's a big deal. That's right. I know when you think of throwing things away and are doing spiritual spring cleaning of your home, it can be frightening to think, oh, man, I'm going to throw all this stuff away. No, what's really frightening is your pride. That's what's really frightening. Because you've got to admit that what you heard today was the truth, and you've got to get right with God about something. That might bother you a little bit. Let me help you out with something. Just get on your knees and beg God for forgiveness and say, Lord, I messed up. Pray against these things. Get them out of your house. Destroy them. Sit with your family and come together with your family and say, all right, we're going to pray. And we're going to ask God to forgive us for having these things in our home and ask him to cleanse our home and to give us his power and to use us in a mighty way. That's what we did. So we did last night. Why? Because I don't care what anybody else thinks. I don't care if it bothers anybody. I think you're weird. I don't care. I think you're weird. I think playing with witchcraft is weird, okay? Yeah. I think worshiping all these objects. And if you've got something that's too important to you that you can't get rid of, that God wants to get rid of, it's an idol. You better get rid of it. That's right. It's an abomination. That's right. When you think of throw, you know, look, look who he's talking to, though. Look who he's talking to. He's talking to the children of God. He says, Israel has sinned. And they have also transgressed my covenant, which I commanded them. For they have even taken of the accursed thing and have also stolen and dissembled also. And they have put it even among their own stuff. You know, when God calls us, to reprove the unfruitful works of darkness. We're, we're to reveal what they are. And when we're to follow the scriptures and obey him. And if we want to wage. By the way. After you're done doing that. It is important for you. To pray and ask the Lord to forgive you. It is important. 
It's important to ask him to cleanse you, cleanse your home. It's important to ask him and to pray against any wickedness or evil spirits. You say, I don't, you really think they're real? Oh, I know they are, friend. I don't think nothing. I know they are upon the authority of this book. And I know how much they absolutely hate my guts. Okay? And how they want to deceive us because they know who we stand for. And we've got to stand against them. I don't preach this book as an abstract book that's not real, okay? Like it's some kind of stories long ago that have no application for today. No, abs- this is the living word of God. And we are in these times right now. And we have this war right now. And God has called it. God is calling a remnant out everywhere of people that are willing to wage war against this coming wicked kingdom that is going to take the whole earth. And they are waging war. And people are coming out of all this wickedness. And they're seeing the truth of things. And God is leading us to do that and we've got to pray against this evil and we've got to stand against this evil and we cannot let it anywhere near our home we cannot traffic in the accursed thing we must be pure before god if we will be used by god because if we want god to protect us against our enemies who want to destroy us and hurt our testimony and take our children and destroy them and initiate them into the occult and ruin their lives and send them to hell then we must fight and we must war and we must separate from them and have no fellowship with any of the unfruitful works of darkness there's no movie that's too important there's no toy there's no t-shirt there's no stupid object that's important enough to keep us from obeying god the only thing that stands between you and i doing right is our pride actually admitting that you weren't perfect and you made some mistakes and you were wrong and how about this you were fooled Happens. Happened to me. But see, God is sharpening our discernment and he's showing us things. That's what's happening in this church right now. God is showing us things and he's sharpening our discernment. Why? Because the battle's ahead, that's why. There's a war and it's going to wage and it's, it's going to rage and it's going to be, it's, it's gonna be a, a big one. With a lot of things in this world. That's right. And we need to pray, pray, pray. But we first got to be have our homes clean. We've got to do some spiritual spring cleaning and get rid of some things that are dishonoring to God and that bring cursed objects into our home. You need to be careful about any of this occultic stuff, folks. Don't think anything is not that big of a deal. That's what people think. Oh, that's not that big of a deal, is it? Or this isn't that big of a deal, is it? No, everything's a big deal. Okay? Everything's a big deal. Amen. And we've got to look at things like that. Why? Because... If it wasn't a big deal, then the devil wouldn't have made sure it was in your, to try to make sure it was in your home and to try to have you advertising for him. That's essentially what we're doing. If we bring these wicked things into our home, we are advertising for the devil. He's laughing. Because he's like, look at those stupid Christians. They're following me and all this stuff, and they don't even know it. They're so deceived. Don't you understand where Satan sends most of his forces? Do you think most of Satan's forces are at the strip club? Do you really think that? Now, why would most of Satan's forces have to be somewhere that he already owns? So where are all his soldiers at? Messing with you. You get it? Where were his soldiers yesterday? I don't know. We step out and don't even get started preaching, and we have a banner up, and some crazy lady comes up, some crazy charismatic lady comes up, and she starts barking at us right away and wouldn't leave until I rebuked her in the name of Jesus Christ and told her that she was a child of the devil and she needed to leave. Yeah. Why? Because that's where God, that, that's where the devil is going to send his demons. That's where he's going to send his devils to. He's going to send them to where the children of God are. And his goal is to afflict you, to bother you, to hurt your testimony, to destroy your children. That's his goal. Okay? That's what he's doing. He, he has no reason to fight at the strip club. He has, he's already got the Super Bowl. Are you kidding me? There were millions of people that were screaming, thousands that were there at the event, screaming the whole time, and they built up the greatest satanic, uh, uh, wicked ritual that you will ever find right there. And they not only we, we they not only did it last year, they did it the year before, they did it the year before, and they've got millions of people screaming and hollering and giving their cheers to witchcraft. So does he have to hang out there a bunch? No, it's already a place that's honored 
that honors him. So where does he go? His troops come to mess with you. Do you know what? We're not praying enough against that evil. We're not praying enough against the Vatican. We're not praying enough against uh, the, 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 the Masonic order and all these high elite level things. We're not praying against wicked government. We're not praying enough against these wicked spirits that are out there. We're not praying enough against the evil that's connected to them. Amen. We're not praying enough against those things. We need to pray more for God's protection. Amen. So I hope you see, see this is a time to do some spiritual spring cleaning. I hope it makes sense to you. I hope it helps some people out there. And maybe, you, maybe some people think I'm crazy, but that's okay. That's okay. I would always rather err on the side of caution than bring in an accursed, wicked thing into my home. I would always rather you say, I'm not going to get to heaven. God's going to say, well, you know, you don't have to worry about that box of cereal too much or that other thing too much. It wasn't that big of a deal. No, I don't think God's going to say that to me. I don't think God's going to say, you followed me too closely. You were too cautious. You went overboard to be too cautious about it. I don't think that's going to happen. I think he's, I want him to say, well done, thou good and faithful servant. That's what I want him to say. And I don't care what the world says because the world hates Christ. Amen. It hates him. And the world hates Christ's followers. Father, thank you, Lord, for your words. Thank you for the truth. Dear God, help us to follow you in all things. Dear God, we need you. We need your power. We need your protection, Lord, as we try to wage war against the devil, as you've called us to do, being soldiers on the front line of your army. Lord, I just pray, God, that you protect this church against all its enemies. Lord, against all those principalities, powers. Lord, against all the workers of darkness, against spiritual wickedness in high places, against principalities, all of them, Lord, these wicked devils that are out there, Lord, those in authority that are out there that would try to harm this work or any family here, anything else that we're trying to do for you, Lord. We just pray, Lord, that you bind those wicked serpents, those wicked devils, Lord. You keep them far from us. You put that high hedge of protection about us, Lord, and keep the evil from our homes. And Lord, help us to clear out the evil and not invite it in. Dear God, help our homes to be places of purity. Help it to be places of truth and righteousness where Jesus Christ reigns, rules and reigns on the throne of our hearts and on the thro- in the throne of our homes and in our church as he is the King of kings and Lord of lords and the head of the, head of the church. Help us, dear God, to honor you with our lives. Bless this food that we have and the time we have together, Lord, I pray in Jesus' name. Amen.